good morning, Calvary. Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday as we gather to be in community with one another uh, and with the saints that have gone before us, that will come after us, that are surrounding us in the great cloud of witnesses as we mark this day as the great, large Christian community that we are. Uh, before we get started, we do have a few announcements to jump into, uh, just to go through and talk about uh, first of all, we do have the uh, uh, drive-in worship that's continuing that was at the fairgrounds because of the snow. It was moved to First Lutheran's parking lot uh, from last week and this week today. Uh, and then the next two weeks on the 8th and the 15th, it's going to be held at the Calvary parking lot. Uh, and so that's 10 o'clock. You can drive in in your cars, have some worship together as we've been doing over the summer in the fairgrounds. Now for the next two weeks, it will be at Calvary uh, on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Uh, also happening on the 15th, following that worship service, it was going to be a celebration of Pastor Nate's ministry here at Calvary uh, as we wish him and his family well in the next step of what God has in store. Uh, so what we'll be doing for that is after the worship service, that drive-in time, we'll allow folks from First Lutheran and other associated ministries to uh, move on their way. And then after about 15 minutes of that, we'll start with kind of this service of celebration, uh, of taking part in honoring Nate and what God has been doing through him. We're also going to be having a congregational gift uh, for him. And so if you're interested in donating towards that congregational gift, you can either on your offering check write for Nate's congregational gift or on Rebel Give, you can designate that as well. So keep an eye on your newsletter, uh, on future announcements for details about that service that will be coming up on the 15th couple of other things. We are still looking for some assistance with snow removal volunteers. Uh, if you're interested in helping out Calvary in that way, uh, being someone who could assist us with any kind of snow removal, shoveling, snow blowing, that kind of thing this winter, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call or send us an email to calvary at calvarybemidji.org. With regard to confirmation, we are so close to having all of our small group leader spots filled. We do need two more folks for a seventh grade boys group for in-person gatherings. They have leaders for online stuff, but uh, the leaders are not able to meet in person. And so if you're interested in helping out uh, with that small group, we would love to have you uh, get in touch with us as well. So you can talk to Kim about that. Uh, and I would really love that. So uh, something else, second offering for November is our... Uh, partner with Lutheran Campus Ministry. And an exciting piece there is that today, All Saints Sunday, there is a vote over at First Lutheran to possibly call a new pastor uh, for that position uh, at Lutheran Campus Ministry. So we keep them in our prayers and we'll hear a little bit more from them uh, next week as we do our second offering. I think that is everything for me for our announcements. So let's begin our worship this morning with our song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High.
goes to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, from the dead to the From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Let us pray together. God of compassion, by the power of God, Elijah provided bread and oil for the widow in her household. By faith in God, the widow provided food and water for Elijah. Give us hearts to love one another so that in providing and in receiving, we too might experience the unimaginable power of God through the one who has provided life itself, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, for children's time today, I would invite you to gather around the font as we do so traditionally and when we're together uh, to witness uh, God's power and the use of water and God's word. Today, though, I have you invite you to imagine with me and maybe gather around some candles or some water um, and uh, remember your baptismal as we talk about this important part of being children of God. When we gather around this font as God's children, we hear these great promises found like in Mark 16, 16, which says, those who believe and are baptized will be saved. Now, this is a super important part of our faith, and as a pastor, it's one of my favorite parts of the job to watch faith get planted into the lives of people of all ages. Of course, God knows us and claims us when we're born into this world, but baptism is a special relationship where God comes and kisses us, starts an intimate relationship with us to say that no matter how we journey through life's joys and through life's sorrows, God is with us. And that assurance brings us so much comfort and joy. Around this baptismal font this year and in the lakes and rivers and streams where we've gathered uh, during COVID, we have had the joy of celebrating with 19 new members of the body of Christ. And the, these small candles that are lit on the font are to be a reminder uh, of those lives shining brightly for God. Now, in the waters of baptism, it is an ending of our sinful life and a rising of our new life in Christ. And this matters because all throughout our life, we will hear even in the scripture story that there are endings and beginnings happening all the time. And God is in the midst of each and every one of those transitions. And ultimately, when uh, we gather around uh, this font it, at the time of a funeral, we remember again who we are as God's children and God's promises come again when there's an ending and a new beginning uh, starting now in God's kingdom in heaven with Jesus. So I invite you uh, to light a candle at home uh, to remember your baptismal promises, to dip your finger in some water and share around your household. Remember that you are a child of God. Remember that you are a child of God. And then would you pray for me and with me rather, uh, with the uh, names up on the screen uh, that uh, represent all those who have joined the body of Christ through baptism here at Calvary Lutheran Church. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of baptism, for the ending and beginning gathered around these waters. And now hear us as we pray for those baptized here in 2020 by name. We pray for Maverick. Adelaide, Leighton, Samuel, Kai, Christian, Jada, Lauren, Lena, Bryn, Shayla, Cade, Olivia, Everett, Sawyer, Case, William, Bo, and Amelia. May you continue to bless us in the baptismal promises in this life and the next. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
As we move into the portion of our service dedicated to hearing the word of God, let us prepare our hearts and speak together our reading from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Our reading today comes from 1 Kings chapter 17. I'll start reading with verse 1. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to King Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him saying, Go from here, Elijah, and turn eastward and hide yourself by the wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So Elijah went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the Wadi Cherith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the Wadi. But after a while, the Wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon, and live there. For I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So Elijah set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there, gathering sticks. Elijah called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel so that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her again and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in the jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and for my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son? But he said to her, Give me your son. And Elijah took him from her bosom, carried him into the upper room where he was lodging, and laid him on his own bed. Elijah cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? 
Then Elijah stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth is truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, good morning, church. As we gather here on this first day of November to worship and to remember God's great promises to us, God's children, I hope that you're all doing well. We call today All Saints Sunday, a day that we focus on the promise and the power of the gift of the resurrection, a key foundational promise that Christians cling to their entire lives into our next life. This promise has, has us remember the faith of those who have died and gone before us into resurrected life with our God and those who have been baptized into this promise of new life. You know, it's been 11 years since my dad died, and he's someone I always remember on All Saints Sunday. I can't believe that much time has gone by. And when I think about that time in my life, I'm so grateful for your care of me and my family during that time. All the memorials you generously gave to our John's Gym here at Calvary. His death came as a complete shock. After being a pastor for about eight years by then, you'd think I would have handled the news of my own dad's death with a little more, bit more of sophistication, but it all seems like a complete blur. Because dad died of an aneurysm, there were no goodbyes, there were no hospice angels gathered around guiding us and preparing us. One moment dad was alive, and the next moment dad was dead. But truly, regardless of how we lose a loved one, we are never ready, are we? It feels surreal. For me, death felt very final. It felt like an end. We went to Iowa and we were wrapping up, putting an end to my dad's involvement in his own business, his optical ministry. We were giving away dad's clothes, praying that there are people that could use them and needed them. We were completing paperwork that was unfinished because dad wasn't coming back. We muddled through all the day-to-day -day tasks and finally the worship day came to celebrate my dad's life and commend him to God's eternal keeping. And it was then at that final song and that church I grew up in, the song my family had picked to celebrate my dad's life, the song, Oh, When the Saints Go Marching In. And my dad, who played the cymbals in the army band, we found a cymbal player to come in and play during that final hymn. Those cymbals rang and rang throughout that church. It brought tears to my eyes and floods of memories and emotion. And yet, in that moment, a new beginning started for me. It was because of my faith and the power of that song and the ringing of the cymbals that I remembered these promises that I too would see my dad again. It was because of my faith that a tiny germ of hope started to emerge that would carry me through the grief of losing my dad and the good and bad days up until today. It sure felt like a goodbye to my dad during that time of my life. And yet I'm confident that it was hello for all the saints dad got to join in that heavenly reunion. And by God's grace, it was an ending and a new beginning, both for me and for my dad. When I think about All Saints Sunday too, I also think about all those that we've baptized here in this community. And and uh, both of my kids were baptized here at Calvary. And you may remember that both of them screamed through the entire service. 
That's right, those dang pastor kids came up here and just wailed as the water was poured over their heads. And somebody, after one of the services, saddled up beside me, and I remember kind of feeling awkward about my kids screaming so loudly. And they said something to the effect that, really, that's how we should all feel at baptism. It's a death to our sinful self. It's a change. It's a loss. It should be filled with emotion, and screaming just sounds appropriate. At the time, I do remember feeling comforted by someone making a comp comment like that. But the more I thought about it, the more truth I felt like sunk in. As we begin our journeys, being washed by water in this baptismal font, we are literally drowned in the promises of Christ, emerging just in time to grasp new breath into our lungs. And then that oil tattoo is placed on our foreheads in the sign of the cross, our Christian symbol of death and resurrection, claiming indeed that we are new creations in Christ. Death and new life, all wrapped up into these incredible milestones we pause to think about here on All Saints Sunday. All endings and beginnings. And usually these transitions, these milestones, are filled with a lot of emotion. Now, today's scripture may not feel like a traditional All Saints Sunday story. It's a story in the Old Testament of God having a new prophet arrive on the scene, a guy that we know named Elijah. God recruited Elijah to do some battle with the powers that be in the land. King Ahab in the northern kingdom and his new wife Jezebel are all about worshiping the small g gods. Baal. One of those small g gods is the god of fertility and ironically the god of thunderstorms. And so through Elijah's voice, God speaks and says, Hey folks of the land, we're going to have a drought for up to three years. And there's nothing that your small g gods can do about it. And then the whole rest of this Bible story is about endings and new beginnings and watching how God continues to show up and provide and be present through all the transitions. In the scripture today, multiple times, uh, we hear this repeating, these ending and new beginnings from the water and the sky ending to God providing for Elijah by pointing him to the water in the wadi or the valley where water would store up after a good rain. And Elijah was provided for. Then the wadi dries up and there is no more water source. And by this point, you think Elijah would be praying for God to send rain again. But instead, he waits for some direction and God points him in a new way. Travel to another area, actually where Jezebel is from, her hometown, and stand outside the gate and a widow will provide you with what you need. And Elijah does. And a new beginning starts for him. Now, at this point, I would start to get antsy as a human and wonder, how long, God, are you going to do this? How long do I need to wait for your provision to come? Can't I just plan ahead? Where are you? This is really hard. And yet, despite how I would feel, or maybe even Elijah feel, God continues to come. He comes again. When the widow's worried about the meal and the oil running out, God provides, not in abundance, but just enough for Elijah and her and her son to eat for many days. And finally, there's that stunning story at the end about the widow's son dying. His breath ends, the scripture says. And after Elijah calls out to the Lord, God comes yet again and brings new life. Over and over and over again, when an end comes, God provides a new beginning. And all of Scripture tells of this story. Now, these transitions are emotional. And we don't always feel an overwhelming sense of God's presence in these emotional times. And we always don't get a real clear direction of 
where to look for God's provision and when God is going to come to provide for us and start a new beginning. At least I don't always get those clear messages. It takes things like symbols ringing throughout a church and the sound of my own children screaming at the top of their lungs as water is poured over them and other dramatic signs. Yet despite how I feel along my journey, I trust that God is there. And in every ending, God is pointing to a new beginning. You and I believe in a word, God's word, that is sometimes hard to comprehend and trust. And yet all throughout scripture, we see this pattern repeated, repeated over and over again, usually accompanied by some powerful words, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For in every ending, there is a new beginning. And God's word has that power. Power to heal and renew and restore, transforming endings into new beginnings for us and for all creation. We serve this God. This God of life. This God of providing. This God of provision. This God of hope. In this life and the next. To every end, there is a new beginning. To God be given the glory. Amen. Three. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go Gathered together in Christ Jesus, let's share our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please read these together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered together in Christ Jesus, we now pour out our prayers before the cross, trusting that God hears us and all of our prayers. For this All Saints Sunday, I will also read all the names of those who are connected with Calvary, who have passed this last year. We lift them to God, trusting that it is these saints who have gone before us, who lead us and guide us into everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, we lift to you the saints that have walked before us on this journey that we call life. We give you thanks for the memories, for the experiences, and for the partnership that we have had with them over the years in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As we lift up these names to you, hear the cries of our hearts. 
Nancy Alto, Roger Booker, Donna Dickey, Peggy Holter, Maury Jacobson, Millie Lingrack, Alice Lingren, Dan McAllister, Dwayne Moorberg, Ruby Ruzicka, Marianne Steele, Betty Anderson, Yvonne Rasmussen, Todd Landa, Carol Nelson, Robert Risland, Charles Crook, James Karish, Troy Wasson, Carol Janiska, Neil Valley, Pat Valley, Ronald Lauterbaugh, Barbara Pierce, Vivian Kent, and Aaron Powers. And also hear the saints that we name before you now in the silence of our hearts. God, we look forward with resurrection to the promise and to the peace that you provide that one day we will all be gathered together in your heavenly room. God, we pray for all those who have gone before us and we give you thanks for their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the abundance of life that is all around us. We give you thanks for relationships, for friendships, for neighbors, for family, and even for those that we do not know. God, we pray that we can spread light, that we can be salt, and that we can share the good news of Jesus with all those before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks that this day you have found us right here, that you have come to us again in Jesus the Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit to give us faith, to give us life, and to give us hope. God, we pray for our world who is crying out to you. We pray for those who are experiencing uh, tornadoes or fires or hurricanes, violence or war, unsettlement, hunger. God, we pray for those who are experiencing homelessness or experiencing others that are, that are keeping from you. God, we pray that you will continue to unite us, that your church would be moving and alive and that as we, your hands and feet of Christ in this earth, would help and serve all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks and we pray for all those who are out working. We pray for teachers and staff members and schools and communities. We pray for our government as we begin to make elections. God, we ask for your will to be done. And we ask that you continue to provide for where there is need. Give wisdom, give counseling, give might, give courage, give strength. And most of all, give us faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, all these prayers and the prayers of our hearts, hear us so now as we unite our voices with the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we're sent out today, we trust that God is with us, that God continues to move in us and through us, and that through his church, God's kingdom is being built. Join us next week, same time, same place, uh, on your uh, home uh, uh, TV, your home sanctuary, or you can join us at the drive-in uh, Calvary Community uh, Worship Service at 10 a.m. We'll be hearing the story of Jonah, uh, Jonah and the big fish. 
a uh, great story, a great biblical story. So we'll hear Pastor Jeremiah's take on that. As we're sent out, we know that God goes with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone.